Do you know your cereals? No, I'm not talking about these that are sold in the supermarket. What I'm talking about is what the farmer grows in his fields. Like this. And this. And this. I'm always surprised how many people don't know about the cereals that we grow in the country. So today I'm going to show you the three most common cereals grown in Britain and how to distinguish them. The first field that I showed you is a field of barley, just about ready to be harvested. Here is a stock of barley. As you can see, the head is made up of a number of seeds, each of which has a whisker from it. So the way that you can determine barley from any of the others, as you'll see later, is barley always has a beard. As barley is used in the production of beer, our second field is a field of wheat. As you can see, the wheat plant stands tall and erect. It's almost as if it's proud. And why would that be? It's used in milled form as flour in the production of many staple foods, such as bread, or if you prefer something a bit sweeter, cakes and biscuits. There is no long beard on this one, and that's one of the distinguishing features from barley. The third most common cereal grown in Britain is the oat. It stands tall, but it differs from the wheat as the ears are separated from each other and they all droop, almost as if the oats are hanging in shame. But why would that be? Well, I'll have to take you to another field to have a look and see. This is a typical example of why oats should hang their head in shame. We're standing in a field of barley here, and there's a group of three or four oat plants as well. How did they get here? Well, it may have been that there were oats in this field last year, and some of the seeds were just left in the ground. But more likely, they've got into the seed that was sown in the field. These odd oat plants that come up in the middle of fields give rise to the expression, sowing your wild oats. Oats which have been rolled between two hard surfaces and therefore have the seed broken are used in many of our everyday cereals such as porridge oats, muesli, but are also used as animal feed especially for horses and cattle. I'm sure you might have noticed that the crops we've discussed bear quite a resemblance to some of the grasses that you can find out on the roadside. And it's not surprising because these were the basis of the crops we have today where they were crossbred to produce larger seeds, a greater yield and more nutrition. I hope that this has proved interesting to you and that you might find it give you a bit more enjoyment when you're out in the country and can have a look and identify these crops. It might also be useful if you have young children who are starting to learn about where their food comes from. I've given some examples of where these three crops are used and I'm sure with a little bit of investigation your child or grandchild could quite easily find other uses for these products.